Welcome again, guys. Please join me as we journey further in our exploration into the world of physics. And for this segment, our topic is the types of forces. The objectives that will be covered in this topic include 1. To identify the types of forces and 2. To determine the weight of objects. So it's a pretty short topic and this will lay the foundation for your next topic which has to do with turning forces. So let us get right into it. Now what are forces? A force is considered to be a push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. And that force can either be a contact force or a non-contact force. So we can say that types of forces can be subdivided into the categories of non-contact forces and contact forces. Now, contact forces are those forces which require some form of physical contact between two or more bodies. And contact forces can also be categorized under pushes or pulls. Those which are pushes are applied force, normal force, and frictional force. Now, in a modern context, you might see applied force being referred to as muscular force. If you see muscular force in any other context, it is still the same thing as applied force. So in practical terms, we could say that the applied force or muscular force is the force that is due to the action of your muscles in pushing. So if you push here at this point on this box in the illustration, then this would be your applied or your muscular force right here. Now, as you push this box in this direction, the motion would be in that direction and friction would act opposite to that motion. So friction always acts in such a way that it opposes the force that is causing it. So our next contact force, which is normal force, is simply the reaction of a surface to a force which is applied or in contact with it. So this box right here is applying a force on this surface due to the weight and the surface is responding by giving a reaction force which is known as the normal force. And we can get a better view of this in a simulation. So let us take a look at that. So here in our simulation we have an object here which is a box and on our box we can see the force of gravity which gives the weight of the box. And this is counteracted by a normal force here as we spoke about. And this normal is the reaction to the weight of this box pushing down on the surface. So we have an equal and opposite force to the weight of this box acting on the surface. And that force is the normal or the reaction force right here. And if I increase the mass of my box, I notice that my weight or my force due to gravity is increased as well. And if this is increased, then my reaction or my normal force actually increases too. So I can increase that further to show you that as I increase my mass, my weight increase and my normal, which is the reaction force, also increases. Now, applied force or muscular force, as we spoke about, has to do with the application of your muscles. So the use of your muscles in applying a force. So if I apply my force, which is called my applied force, to the left, I notice that as my applied force Fa acts to the left, I also see another force which is frictional force acting to the right. That is denoted by FF right there. So I have a FF for frictional force and my FA is my applied force. And if I push this box back to the right, you can see that in action again. So you see my frictional force is actually less than my applied force and therefore I am able to push the box in the direction of my applied force. So what the friction actually does is to oppose my applied force. So if I was to increase my friction and we have two frictions here, which is static friction, that's the friction that exists between the box and the surface when it is not moving. And I have kinetic friction which is the friction between the box on the surface when it is moving. So if I increase both my frictions and try to move that box, I realize that it is much more difficult to move and I would need a greater value of force to move it. So I have to get a greater value of force in order to overcome that friction before the box actually starts to move. And at this point, 
I have overcome that valley of friction and I can move my box. And the same thing applies if I was to go the other direction with the same friction. As I exert my force, I realize that I need a very large force in order to overcome the friction. Until the friction is overcome, the box will not move. Because friction is the opposition of the applied force. So at that point, where I just about overcome my friction, then my box begins to move. So this actually shows us normal force, frictional force, and applied force, and also force due to gravity, which we will look at shortly. Now, another form of contact force is tensional force. And this is a force that is popular in springs and strings. And it is caused by two opposing forces, which stretches the spring or the spring. So tension is as a result of a stretching force. So we have just about covered all our contact forces. Now let us take a look at our non-contact forces. Now non-contact forces, as the name suggests, are those forces which does not require physical contact in order to act. These include gravitational, electrostatic and magnetic forces, and nuclear forces. Now our first non-contact force, which is gravitational force, is the force that acts between bodies depending on their masses. This is the force that keeps us grounded onto the earth. So the earth is actually applying a force on our bodies and pulling the masses of our bodies towards the earth. Likewise, when you throw a ball upwards, the force of gravity pulls it back down to earth. So it's the forces between bodies depending on the masses of those bodies. And that can be given by a formula which is not really required by your syllabus. But however, let us take a quick glimpse of this formula. So here we have our formula for gravitational force. And this formula is gravitational force equals gravitational constant times mass number one multiplied by mass number two divided by r squared. And r squared is the distance between the masses. So for instance, if we are comparing the earth and the moon, the R here would represent the distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Moon. And we would have a gravitational force between them. And this force here is determined by the value of mass 1 and mass 2 by our equation given right here. So this is the formula for gravitational force. Now the next non-contact forces are electrostatic forces and magnetic forces. And electrostatic forces are demonstrated here. And what electrostatic forces are is simply the forces between charged bodies. So here we have a positive charge and a negative charge. And we have forces of attraction between them. Here we have two positive charges and we have forces of repulsion between them. Likewise, for two negative charges, we have forces of repulsion again. So electrostatic forces act between charged particles. Now, as the name suggests, magnetic forces originate from magnets. And similarly, like poles here would actually repel. So a north pole to a north pole would give a repulsive magnetic force, whereas a north pole to a south pole would give an attractive magnetic force. So the next one in our series is the nuclear force. And nuclear force is the force that exists between molecules in an atom. So the intermolecular forces in the nucleus of an atom is what gives us the nuclear force. So for a quick summary of the main forces, you can look at this figure right here, which gives a clear, concise illustration of the main forces described. So we have our muscular or applied force right here. And also we have our frictional force here. So we see that friction acts in the opposite direction of the motion. So practically speaking, the friction would actually be between the surface and the object right here. However, we can show it right here just to demonstrate the size of the friction itself. But the actual position of action would be right here. And here in our non-contact forces, we have a summary of our magnetic, electrostatic, and gravitational force. And remember we said gravitational force is the attractive force that is exerted between two objects. And that is dependent on the size or the masses of those objects. Also, 
gravitational force is responsible for a very important relationship between mass and weight. So let us take a quick look at that relationship. So we say that there is a direct relationship between mass and weight. And we also said that that has something to do with gravity. So let us use some experimental data here to explore that relationship between mass, weight and gravity. But first, let us look at the definitions of mass and weight. And we see here that the mass of an object is a measure of the amount of substance which makes up that body. And the weight is the effect of the force of gravity acting on that mass. So in our experimental data represented in the table here, we know that the mass is simply the amount of substance that makes up this body. And the weight is the effect of the force of gravity on that body. And this data was generated by using a beam balance, which we know is used to measure mass. And the data for weight was generated using a spring balance, which we know is used for measuring weight. Now from our plot of a graph of weight versus mass, we realize that there is a direct relationship between weight and mass. And this is given by our straight line of best fit seen here. So this tells us therefore that there would be a constant in terms of the gradient. So this constant value will give us a relationship between weight and mass. So let us go ahead and find the gradient of our graph to determine what that constant value is. So to determine the gradient of our straight line here, we need to first identify two points on our line. And remember when doing so, we choose two points as far as possible so we get the largest possible gradient triangle. So I'm going to choose my point of origin here, which is 0, 0 in terms of x1, y1. And I'm going to choose this point right here as my x2, y2. So let me label them as such. So this point here is my x1 and y1 and this point here is my x2 y2 so these two points would give me the coordinates 0 0 and for my x2 y2 this would give me 5 and 50 now we can see that in our table this point gives us a value of 49.8 however in our plot it was rounded off to 50 so we'll use 5 50 for our x2 y2 and 0 0 for our x1 y1 so let us go ahead and find our gradient from these two points now remember your formula for gradient of a line which is represented by m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and from our coordinates you would recall that our y2 value was actually 50 newtons so this would be equal to 50 newtons minus y1 which was 0 newtons divided by x2 which was 5 kilograms minus x1 which was 0 kilograms so this would work out to be 50 newtons divided by 5 kilograms and this would give us a value of 10 newtons per kilogram. So this is the gradient of our straight line. Now from our equation of a straight line, which is y equals mx plus c, we know that the y here represents our y coordinate and the x represents our x coordinate and m represents our gradient and c represents our y intercept which in this case is actually zero because our graph actually originates from the origin so c in this case is zero so you could say that our equation would actually become y equals mx since c is zero and from our calculation here we realize that m is actually 10 newtons per kilogram so if we substitute that value then our equation becomes y is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram times x but also we realize that y represents our weight and we also know that x represents our mass so we can basically say that weight is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram multiplied by mass so this equation is actually what gives us weight is equal to mass times gravity and here we can clearly see that gravity would be represented by our 10 newton per kilogram here. So this is the rounded value or the approximate value that we use for acceleration due to gravity. 
So we can therefore conclude that weight is equal to mass multiplied by gravity. So that takes us to the end of this segment. So I'll see you guys in the next video.